chicken. <laughs> yeah. I like fishing Clear Lake with Wally Smith. I'm your guide. You're that was my there? first pass. <laughs> Well, he said, I saw your first cast. I was just telling you exactly. That what. was awesome. And see that practice of the overhand? That was absolutely <laughs> awesome. And he gave you a little uh, window there to hook him. Yes, he did. That was beautiful. Hey, folks, we're here on Clear Lake, California. I've got Wally Smith with me. He's got a place up here on, on Clear Lake, up on the north end. And we're going to talk about some jig fishing today for monsterfishingtackle.com. We're going to break it down. The jig is one of Wally's favorite baits, the jig and the frog. We're gonna do some offshore structure fishing, which is some of the greatest stuff to be throwing your jigs on. We've got some half ounce jigs to one ounce jigs that we're gonna be using. And Wally, we're sit you, we pulled up here, I made one throw, I caught one about two and a quarter, two and a half. That was absolutely awesome, but we gotta do this intro. Why are we sitting right here right now? Well, first of all, because there's uh, no other boats. <laughs> Um, also, the fact that you caught that fish on the first cast means that we won't catch another fish the rest of the day. <laughs> but typically, the reason I'm here is this, this break has everything that, that you want. It's got, right now, with the lake as low as it is, we still, from this one position, can fish 5 feet, 7 feet, 10 feet, 12 feet. And it goes actually all the way down to 15 feet. And those fish will be everywhere. And not only do you catch them on the jig, if that starts to die, you could drop shot them, you could shaky head them, DD-22, you could throw your uh, rattle trap is a good spot for this. So you could, whether it's a tournament or fun fishing, you can catch fish here all day long on all different techniques. And when you got 100 boats uh, on the lake, it does shrink a little bit. And this is a, a big fish spot, and it's also a good numbers fish spot, as you saw from your first cast. Wally, when you're doing this jig thing, I know, just listening to you talk, Bottom contact is a big deal with you. Yep. What, what pound line are you using when you're when you're working your jig? So I use a 16 pound test uh, floral. So I can feel the whole, feel where that jig is, whether I'm moving it or dead sticking it. Mm -hmm. And you like that 16 over 20? I do, it's you know smaller diameter. So I, I feel like I get more bites with it. Yet, if you get a good floral, you got plenty of strength. You know, you can set the hook on any fish and land any fish of any size, even on a lake like Clear Lake. Mm -hmm. Wally, there's so many different ways to fish a jig. I'm, you're fishing yours a little slower. I'm trying to, you're counting the rocks and I'm trying to fish a little more aggressively, kind of that hop and crawdad program. Why are you doing what you're doing? It's really just trial and error, you know, trying to figure out what the fish want. And I don't know until I come out and do all these different techniques. And then one fish will tell me what they want. And if they want it hopped, I'm hopping all day. If they want it sitting there, then I'm sitting all day. Well, you mentioned that when you're fishing your jig, you like to hop it, you like to fish it real aggressively. I, this is kind of cool because I don't normally get to fish with other guys with you know fishermen of your caliber. I, I would love to see how, when you say you're hopping a jig, I want to see how you're doing that. Yeah, I don't know if you can see, see the rod or at least the handle, but this give you an, an idea. But when I'm hopping a jig, I have a lot of slack in the line, but I am popping that thing, reeling down, popping it. So it's a pretty violent hop. So it's really kind of going for that, that reaction strike more than just your typical, uh, typical jig technique. That was very cool. That was very cool. It was a hopper. <laughs> Were you working it hard? Just a little hopper, yeah. Really? You know what? I noticed that, uh, that was awesome, dude. Very cool. I noticed that you have, I'm throwing a trailer with no action and you've got a little twin tail here. Yeah, I use the four inch because it's got the longer pincher, so there's a lot more action with these pinchers when it's in the water, especially for that hopping it. So it's the crawdad trying to get away in that defensive move and that triggers a strike. And then sometimes you'll use a jig that has dead action in the back. Yep, like you saw earlier with the with exactly what you have, just letting it sit. That is that is very cool. And they weren't eating the dead stick, so I did the hop and then boom. So when you're jig fishing, you've got a few different styles. I see that you got four different jig rods up here. Yep. You've got one with some action, one with minimal action, a different size, blah, blah, blah. Yep. I mean, you really break it down and get into yeah. it. 
Yep, and that's why you saw going from the half ounce to this full ounce, going from five feet down to 20 feet, and that fish was about 20 feet deep. Okay, so I'm a guy that, I, I just watched this, this segment right here on, on monsterfishingtackle.com. Jig fishing sounds intriguing to me. I do not have a jig rod. I've never thrown a jig before, but this technique really is appealing to me. What kind of rod do I want to go get? You know, probably the best overall, uh, I'd go kind of a medium action, till the fast tip, maybe a 7.3, 7.4 inch rod. That way you could fish it in everything. And then when you get what your style is, what you're confident in, you can then decide what, where you're going to go as far as your arsenal. Let's elaborate a little bit on what Wally Smith was just talking about. There is an example of a big bulky jig. This is what he likes to use springtime or later in the fall as water temperature starts to get. He's looking for a big bite with a jig like this right here. One of the other jigs that he had mentioned that he really likes to do is a jig, a football head jig, with a crawdad imitation on the back, and he will dead stick this. Just let it sit motionless and wait for those bass to cruise by and pick this thing up. The other type of jig that he uses when he gets up shallow and he starts to flip and he's flipping in and around heavy color are toolies is he's got a more slim line head on that jig, nice fiber weed guard, and a nice stout hook. And he'll put a variety of different trailers on that. And he, of course, he's also got the old Arky style jig head. And these are for fishing shallower, that's a quarter ounce head. Fishing shallower around stumps, sticks, a little bit of wood, fence rows, vegetation edges, that's when he's going to use a jig like this right here. When choosing a jig that's right for you, size of the head is a big deal. So if you're going to be fishing from one to five feet deep, you need to have a variety of jigs in the quarter ounce to three eighths ounce size. If you go from five to 10, five to 12, then you want to start playing with your three eighths, half ounce, maybe start to mix in that three quarter ounce on occasion. Once you start getting from 10 feet down to 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever it may be, now you want to bump it up, just like Wally was talking about, into that three quarter and one ounce phase. Usually when you're fishing that deep in your fishing structures, you're going to stay with the standard football head style jig. But when you're in that one to five, one to 10 zone, and you've got a variety of brush uh, obstructions in the way, it's going to be hard to use that football head jig, that's when you want to go with an Arky style jig, a banana head jig with a pretty stout, not overdone weed guard, but just a little, little stouter weed guard on that. And then when you start to flip your jigs, you get in your three eighths, half ounce, three quarter ounce, and one ounce flipping jigs. Then you want to go with a jig that's got a nice stout weed guard like that right there so you can get that thing in and out of that heavy cover. That's just a quick little synopsis on the different types of jig. We all thought jig fishing was simple and easy, but it, it, can, it can be as complex as you want it to be and as meticulous as you want it to be. But there's so much to it. Get them out there, get a variety of sizes of jigs, quarter, three eighths, half ounce, three quarter ounce, one ounce style. Go with the right heads that you're looking for, the, the banana head style, the football head style, and figure out what works for you. For MonsterFishingTackle.com, I'm Bobby Barrick on Clear Lake with Wally Smith, and it was great spending some time with you folks.